You know that old saying that goes that there are two things that are sure in life, death and taxes? Well, you can add a third one to that list, hard drive failure. And today I'm gonna to be teaching all of you how to safely back up your Mac using a simple piece of software that comes with every Apple computer called Time Machine. Now, Time Machine can be configured to run on one of two different types of devices. The first is called an airport time capsule. It's a device made by Apple. It's wonderful, I'm a big, big fan. It's basically a two-in-one. It's a wonderful wireless router, and it's also a wireless backup system. So if you have multiple Apple computers, that might be the better way to go because you don't have to plug anything in. It's just all automatic. It's really, really nice. If that sounds like a better solution to you, you can check in the uh, description of this video and I will link you to a separate tutorial video that we created a few weeks ago showing you how to set that up. In this video, I'm gonna be teaching you how to use an external hard drive to back up your Mac. We're gonna start off with showing you how to format the drive so that uh, you can use it with Time Machine and then how to actually retrieve your stuff should you need to. Now, one of the things I always warn my clients is that in my opinion, not all hard drives are made equally. There are certain brands that seem to do better than others. And for a complete list of all those brands, you can check out our web store at pcclassesonline.com. Basically what the web store does is it just guides you to where you can buy the products. And one of the new features that I'm hoping works, and I'd kind of be curious to hear it in the uh, feedback section, uh, the comments from all of you to see if it does. If you don't live in the United States, the new web store will basically redirect you to where you can buy it locally. That way you're not paying international shipping charges. So here it is without any further ado, how to back up your Mac using Time Machine. Coming up next on PCClassesOnline.com. All right, folks, here we go. So uh, plugged into my computer right now, and you can see it by this little icon at the top right, we have a Seagate one terabyte external backup drive. Uh, typically for most people, I tend to recommend either the one terabyte or the two terabyte. Um, but what we're gonna do from here is we're going to format the drive. Now, please understand, in the process of formatting, you are going to erase it. So if you are using, uh, let's say, a hard drive that you've had for a while and maybe stored some footage on it, uh, in the process of formatting it, you're going to wipe it out. So you need to either move that footage to your computer or another device like a flash drive. So uh, when you see it appear on your desktop, and it may or may not, it depends ultimately on your settings, what you're going to do is go to Spotlight, the little spyglass icon you see up here at the top right, and we're going to type in the word disk. And it should suggest disk utility. Hit the enter or return key. And there we have disk utility. From here, what we're going to do is you should see one of these, depending on which, uh, of course, which backup you buy. Uh, you want to click on the one that is um, slightly, the, the one that is not indented. Okay, so the top one right here. From here, you're going to go to the right-hand side of the screen. We're going to click on the partition tab. Even if it already says one partition, don't worry, just change it back to one partition. It's fine. It's not important. Uh, next, we're going to change it where it says format. We're going to change it from MS-DOS to Mac OS Extended Journaled. From here, you can rename the hard drive whatever you want. So just to make it easy, I'm going to call it Backup Drive. Okay. And before you hit Apply, the other thing you have to do is click here on Options. You need to make sure it's this top one right here that says GUID Partition Table and click OK. By the way, those uh, drives that we list in the PCO store, some of them actually do come pre-formatted for Mac, but they don't all. And frankly, it's just kind of better off to better be, you know, better be safe than sorry. So I would do this regardless. And then hit Apply. So this is going to make a new drive appear on your desktop. It only takes a few seconds for it to do it. Now, if you have not yet backed up your data, at this point, uh, it's probably going to launch on its own. It's going to ask you, do you want to use this drive as a backup? At that point, you can just hit yes. If not, uh, what you can do, go to the Apple icon, System Preferences. From here, you'd go into Time Machine. Make sure it's turned on. By the way, you can tell it's on because whichever one this is set to, it'll be green. And then over here, you just select disk. Now, clearly, I already have a backup drive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video for a moment. And when we come back, uh, I'm going to show you basically how to use Time Machine should you ever need to fetch your data. All right, everyone. So here's what I'm going to do right now. I have unplugged the Seagate backup, and I have plugged in my own 
uh, backup drive. This is the actual one that I use. For any of you out there who have big, big data, like filmmakers, photographers, videographers, this is the best backup drive out there. It's called the Drobo, and it's basically a little box. It has multiple hard drives in it, and you can upgrade it at any point in time. And what it will do is kind of massage the data between all of those drives so that when one of them fails, you still have three others or four others uh, with all of your data. So for any of you who are big time pro professionals, have a lot of data, this is the gadget to buy. Link to that one in the description of the video. So uh, let's go over a couple of things here. First thing I want to do is give you the symptoms of hard drive failure so you know exactly what to look for so that you're not one day just surprised with the fact that your computer doesn't boot. Um, the key symptom to look for is uh, that spinning rainbow pinwheel. You get it all the time. The computer will be very sluggish. Now, please understand, this is a symptom. And just like with a cold, it can also be a symptom of other things like directory damage. So uh, if your computer's around that three to four year old mark, especially if it's a laptop, uh, if it's around seven, if it's a desktop, those are kind of the key times to look for hard drive failure. And as I mentioned in the intro, it's inevitable. It happens to everyone, so you just want to make sure that you protect yourself so that it's not a giant disaster. So look for those symptoms. If you see them, bring your computer to the Apple Store, and this is where definitely having Apple Care is really, really nice. Um, if you bring your computer to the Apple Store, and while checking it in, if you bring your backup drive, from the Apple Store employees that I've gotten to know over the years, most of them will restore your data for no additional charge. Um, some individual dealerships will, but for the most part, uh, they'll do it all for you. So it's a very easy process when you get your computer back with a new hard drive. It's like nothing ever happened to you. If that's not the case, let's say you bring in your computer and you forget to bring your backup hard drive. When you get your computer back, it has a brand new, hopefully brand new, uh, hard drive with a blank operating system. If that's the case, after you turn it on, I want to say it's the third question that it's at, it asks you is, do you have a backup? Do, are you restoring your data from Time Machine? Obviously, you're going to plug in your drive, hit yes, and wait. It's going to take about one to two hours, depending on what kind of hard drive you have and, of course, how much data you've got. Uh, and then it'll be good to go. It's like nothing ever happened. So uh, what I want to do is show you two different things right now. Uh, the first is how to get back things like documents or video files, and then I'm going to show you how to retrieve photos because that process is a little bit different. So the first step is you have to go into Finder and basically tell Finder where was your stuff. So what I'm going to do for this example is I'm going to go into Downloads because I typically clear up my downloads pretty often. And uh, what we're going to do is go into Time Machine. And to do that, go to the little Time Machine icon that you see at the top right corner of your screen and go to Enter Time Machine. And basically what it's going to do is give you a history of what this folder has looked like at different dates and times. So on the right hand side you see a little slide bar here. All of these lines indicate different dates and times where my computer has backed up. So let's say I'm trying to fetch something that I had on January 19th. I click on that and that is what that folder looked like at that date and time. So uh, I'll just grab one of these video files okay, and click restore. And that's it. It brings it right back. It's like nothing ever happened. Uh, if you should bring back a file that already exists, so for example, um, let me see if I can do it with this dummy letter copy too. Let's go back into Time Machine and do that. So uh, I do a lot of work with authors. For whatever reason, that's just been the type that I've seemed to work a lot with. If you go to like fetch an old version of a document and bring it back, this is what's going to happen. Because it sees the same document or the same name of the same document, it's going to ask you, do you want to keep the original, keep both, or replace? So in this case, you'd have old data that you'd want to retrieve, but you also have new data that you don't want to lose. So in that case, what you do is you hit keep both. The wording of this I find to be very confusing, so I want to give you all a trick to figure it out. Uh, let's organize by name. So you'll see here it has two different documents. One is dummy letter copy two, original, and one is just the normal document. Just think, original equals old, okay? So even though, and I know this is really complicated because it says today's date and timestamp. Original means old. So let's close out of that, and I want to show you a different way to retrieve your data. One of the things a lot of people at some point in time need to fetch 
our photos. And this part is really complicated. It's very confusing. And I don't know why they changed it. It used to be a lot more simple. I don't know. Tim Cook, call me. Work with me, buddy. Um, so uh, what I want to show you is this. Here on the desktop, I have salvaged a photo that I shot back a while ago. And if I go into my photos library, you will notice that that photo is gone. It should be right here. It's gone. I've also erased it from the trash at the same time. So if I need to get that back, let's move that into the trash so that there's no confusion. What you need to do is basically restore the entire photo library. So you better have some really good free space on your computer in order to fetch these few photos or whatever it is you need. Go away, iTunes. Don't care. Uh, so let's go into the home folder from here. It's the one with the little house. Go into your pictures folder and you should see this right here. It's photos library. That's of course if you've upgraded to photos dot photos library. Go into time machine at this point. Enter the time machine. I feel like I should have some good theme music right now. Uh, and what you're going to do is go back to before you deleted that photo. So let's just go back to April 10th in this case. Oh wait, no, I didn't have it then because photos hadn't come out yet. Let's go back to today at 2 o'clock. How's that? Okay. So, ooh, bad example because I was teaching this class then. Monday. <laughs> Sorry about that, folks. Let's do this one right here. We're going to hit restore and it's going to bring back the entire library. Once again, original means old. So in this case, hit keep both. It's a lot faster for me than it's going to be for you guys because keep in mind this is just kind of dummy data that I keep for teaching purposes. And that is back. And if we expand this, you'll see once again, one is called original and one is my current one. And I just want to prove to you that that is in fact correct. So if I double click on this photo library, it should not be there. There you go. So if I close out of photos and I now double click on that original one, Okay, this is exactly what photos looked like back in that date and time, all the way back, you know, three hours ago. Click proceed to restore the library. And there it is, right there. So if you wanted to retrieve this photo or multiple photos, uh, really the best way to do it is just select whatever photos they are. You can go to File, Export, okay. Uh, some people are going to want to put this in a folder. Um, in this case, because it's just one image, I'm just going to uh, just restore it to the desktop. Desktop, export, and it's done. So from here, what you do is close out of photos, go back into the correct photo library, which again is the one that does not say original. See what I mean about this is a ridiculous number of steps. Kind of drag this window off to the side. Grab your photo now here on the desktop and just, even if it's a folder of photos, by the way, you can just drag it into the photos icon and it will import it. Voila. And it's back from the digital grave. So um, it used to be, it's really weird. It used to be that you would actually go into iPhoto and then launch Time Machine and you'd see the entire library just as if you were in the application. You'd pick your individual photos and hit restore. I don't know why they changed that. It was so nice and simple. Um, I'm sure there's a good reason for it. I just don't really know what it is. This is David A. Cox with PC Classes Online. Thank you for watching, folks. Uh, please do us a really, really big favor. If you happen to be watching this video right now on YouTube, uh, you can do us a big favor by clicking that little thumbs up like a button. The reason why that's important is you're actually helping other people find this video. So we appreciate if you click that. If you haven't done so, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's the easiest way to be notified whenever we release a new video. And you can sign up for our website. It's a free service. We do live classes twice a week usually. Uh, they're a lot of fun. This is David A. Cox with PC Classes Online. Class dismissed.